thank you all to uh, our attendees for joining us this evening. Uh, again, I'm Winter Jordan, I'm Associate Dean of Admissions and Director of Access and Equity in the Admissions Office. Um, first, I wanna say congratulations uh, to the students and to the family members that, be joining, that joined us this evening, uh, those admitted to the class of 2025 here at Swarthmore. We're glad you're here coming to learn more about the Intercultural Center and the Black Cultural Center and the roles they play uh, on our campus. Um, we have some wonderful panelists here. I'm gonna have them introduce themselves in just a moment, but just some first, some housekeeping things uh, to think about uh, for tonight. Uh, I am gonna have each of the panelists introduce themselves and talk about their role on campus, talk about what they're up to on our campus um, and how they connect with the Black Cultural Center and the Intercultural Center. Um, and then we're gonna go right into a Q&A uh, from you all. Um, and to do our Q&A question and answer period today, we'll be using that uh, Q&A box uh, probably at the bottom of your screens uh, in Zoom. Pop that open, you can uh, pop your questions in there as our panelists are uh, introducing themselves. Uh, so we can have lots of questions to answer um, uh, for you all uh, uh, tonight. Um, so we'll be doing that with doing those questions through the Q&A space. Um, but without further ado, I want to uh, give our, our, our uh, panelists a chance to introduce themselves, which they will do, uh, and then I'll come back uh, and, uh, and we'll go right into our Q&A. So get your questions ready. Um, so I'm, I'm, I wanna introduce our first panelist, Dion Lewis. Hi, good evening, everyone. And I follow um, Windsor's welcome to uh, a potential welcome to the Swarthmore College com, um, family and community. Uh, my title is I'm one of the Associate Deans of Students and Director of the Black Cultural Center at Swarthmore College. Um, I'll probably talk a little bit about my Associate Dean position, but I'm more likely to talk more about um, what we're here gathered today to talk about my position as the Director of the Black Cultural Center. Um, it's, um, and I say this with pride, it is the first and the eldest identity center at Swarthmore College. Last academic year, um, which was abrupt, the 2019-2020 the the school year, we celebrated our 50th anniversary, anniversary, excuse me. And it was, um, it was just, for me, it was a reminder of all the great work that um, our ancestors and, and the, the early students of color at Swarthmore did um, but also a reminder that there's still work to be done, um, work to be done around issues of identity and equity and inclusion um, at Swarthmore College and beyond. And for us, that's what we try to do. I mean, um, uh, the, the Black Cultural Center, which is affectionately known as the house because it is an actual house at the Cultural Center, um, we try to create it to be a space that's a home um, for, for all students, but particularly students of African descent um, I think uh, uh, two of our students, two of our interns are here today. They'll talk much more about that, I'm sure. But for me, um, being the person who's um, who's supposed to, or I, I'm in, in charge of setting the the pace of the center. That's my one of my main goals is to make sure that space um, feels like a home, both physically when you walk in. I always want it to be welcoming, um, as basic as as down to having. Um, food and refreshments um, as you would if you were at home, but also the aesthetics of it. I've tried to ensure that that place um, not only celebrates who we are as people of African descent, but it's welcoming from art to furniture to even updating, you know, some of the aesthetics like the paint in the floor and the wall. And that's very important for me, um, for it being the space um, um, for persons who have traditionally been disenfranchised and um, our society. I want it to be one of the most welcoming spaces on campus. Um, a little bit about what we do. Um, as I say, we're the home away from home for students of African descent. Um, one of the first things is that we're the um, home base or, or location for the, um, excuse me, for the student organizations um, of African descent. Um, we have uh, five organizations that are affiliated with us right now, the Swarthmore um, um, African American Student Society, the Swarthmore African um, Student Association, the Swarthmore Organization for Caribbean Awareness, the um, National Society for Black Engineers, and the Swarthmore Gospel Choir. Um, and they are in many ways um, doing the normal um, you know, semester of operation. They are our bloodline. They are the group that um, you know, find, I think they find ways of bringing the larger community, but also the the, the community of Swarthmore into that space. And I appreciate all the work that they do 
um, as student leaders. Uh, we do obviously programs, um, you name it, from large major speakers. Um, our most recent major speaker was Ooh, Nikki Giovanni, and that was fall of 2019. But we've done, we do large major speakers that is really for the entire campus community. This is where we'll be, um, I think, um, 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 informing some and, and reminding others about the greatness of what it means to be Black. And we do that, I think, by way of bringing some of these world renowned speakers in. Um, and then we do in house programming, smaller events, everything from study breaks for students to we host an annual, um, we co host um, an annual open house. I'm sorry, we have an open house, but then some of our student groups, um, our, our SAS, they do an annual um, uh, Thanksgiving feast, which has changed its name a few times. Um, but we also um, work with um, um, offices like um, scholarships and prizes. We have a uh, a BCC Sam, that's a student academic mentor who hosts um, academic workshops, everything from time management to study skills to test taking skills that are also in the house. And I appreciate that. Uh, we, uh, we have a classroom in, in, the, in our space and we each semester we have a minimum of one course taught there. Um, and usually it's a, it's a Black Studies course or something underneath the Black Studies program, but we've had everything from a chemistry course taught in there to a French course to a sign language. And I appreciate that. I appreciate that this space is able to have an academic presence at the college by way of the, um, the courses taught there. And um, it, it also it invites people into the Black Cultural Center who may not normally have entered that space. And that's very important because I think as much as this space is a space for students of African descent, it's also a space for us to celebrate who we are and the beauty of what it means to be Black. And you do that by sharing it with persons who are from other um, ethnic or cultural backgrounds. Um, we're a satellite from McCabe Library, um, the, McCabe being the, um, the main library at the college. And um, our, we have a, um, some of the, the African-American holdings at the, um, um, at the college are, are stored at um, the BCC. Uh, the beauty of that, again, is it, is it allows people who may not normally enter the BCC to come to retrieve a book there. And it also allows us to be one of the um, few identity centers that has um, the, uh, the later hours. We're open typically to 2 a.m. because that's the time that the library is open to. So it allows students to have access to the Black Cultural Center um, beyond hours of, 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 of um, study and, and meal time and things of that nature. Um, I think one of the other things that is um, I enjoy about the BCC is that by way of work of the administration um, at the BCC, myself and our administrative assistant, um, Simone Hayes, but also through work of our student groups, we do things that um, we, we touch, we have touch points with the surrounding communities, in particular the community of Chester, which is a um, community of persons um, from underrepresented populations a community of persons with a lower socioeconomic status, but also a community of persons who um, help to keep Swarthmore looking as beautiful as it does, who help to feed our students by way of being a part of the, the um, dining staff, the way of, uh, of keeping it um, clean by being, being a part of the EDS staff. And so for me, that connection um, or that, uh, that operation as part of the, the Black Culture Center is something I, I really, um, I'm happy about is that for those individuals who give so much to the college community, we're able to give back to their community, in particular the youth in their community, by way of tutoring um, um, uh, initiatives, by way of you know going in and doing community service projects, um, in particular you know around our MLK, um, our annual MLK event. <clears throat> excuse me, by way of just, you know, people from the community saying, hey, I'd like to come to the space and, and see it. And I say, hey, come on over, I'm available this time. And sitting there and having conversations with families or, or young people who um, sometimes don't understand or think that the idea of an undergraduate education at Swarthmore College is possible. And um, I tell them, I always remind them, you have to dare to dream. And Swarthmore is very much accessible and accessible institution and does a great job with um, outreach to um, persons from, um, in particular, communities of color. Um, what else would I say? I would say that, you know, as part, part of the, um, 
thing that I also enjoy about um, the BCC um, is, you know, working with our student interns. Again, um, we, we go through a, a selection process with our interns that um, we look for skills and talents that can complement the work that we do as administrators, but also those who come with a skill and talent that will enhance the ex existence of the BCC um, at Swarthmore College. And, and, and part of that is, um, um, I think, is, is, is a way that we help them prepare for the real world, whether it's a workforce or graduate school um, post um, Swarthmore College. I ask things of them that I think that um, they may not always appreciate, but I know that at some point in their development beyond Swarthmore, they'll say, ah, that's why Dean Lewis asked that of us. And it's real important because I, I want to make sure that we're not only making sure they're the best news that they can be, that they're the best um, citizens they can be beyond Swarthmore. And so, um, you know, I have, you know, um, I give them the, the flexibility to create and, 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 and do work that um, um, complements um, uh, the larger Swarthmore community, in particular the Black community, but also things that I think will be a great skill set for them um, beyond with regards to being a, 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 a graduate student and or a professional. I think that's enough for now. I will um, leave it here and I look forward to um, any questions and I'll pass it on to my um, my wonderful colleague, um, Amani Alberki, the director of the Intercultural Center. Amani. Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, it's really great to see you all. So my name is Imani Alberki, and I am an assistant dean and the director of the Intercultural Center. Um, I don't think Dean Lewis got to talk about what he does as an assistant dean. I think he I might have, he forgot I, to do it. So I'm going to tell on his behalf and my behalf real quickly, because it you. is kind of important in terms of the work that we also do at the center. Oh, of course, of course. And then you can, of course, jump in if you want to. Um, but um, so we we function, we have two major roles. We function as the directors of identity centers, but then we're also deans, we're student deans. And as student deans, we provide this really amazing kind of support hub for the students, right? So we become the place where students who we support um, they can start with us and then we can connect them to resources they might need on campus. We can connect them to uh, resources around academic challenges or support if they need to um, take a leave for any reason, if they need accommodations or if they need to be connected to CAPS. Um, we often become that kind of first person that they can speak with. And we also do some student advising. So uh, we kind of understand both sides of the house, the, house, the co-curricular side, as well as the, um, the academic side of things. So um, it's really wonderful to be a dean and the director of an identity center because um, you have this opportunity to get to know students in multiple ways. Um, oftentimes, there are opportunities for you to request someone to be your dean that you've gotten to know very well. And so we will have students that frequent our centers kind of, we may also become their deans as well because we see them often and we are really getting to know them. So it seems like a good fit. Um, and of course, during the Q&A, if anyone wants to ask more questions about like our role as dean, um, we, can, we can talk about that as well. Um, so in terms of the Intercultural Center, um, we, we do a lot of the same things that the Black Cultural Center does. We, we just support other groups. And, um, and really the goal for the identity centers on campus is to ensure that the kind of the student is developed completely. So we know that we're in an academic rigorous place, but we wanna make sure that you feel supported in terms of other parts of who you are as a person that help prepare you to accomplish what you'd like to do in life, right? So our center is housed in um, what's formerly Sproul Hall, Hall, Hall rather, um, and it's the Hormel Nguyen Intercultural Center and it's us as well as the Interface Center and the International Student Center. So it's a pretty fast paced environment. Um, it's a really large building and um, we are really just there to support the um, whatever the students who come into our center are wanting. Um, we support over 20 student organizations and we, we, they're known collectively as the IC Collective. And really for these, in these organizations, we provide an institutional home. Um, we're developing the creation of an intern liaison, which is basically an intern. And I'll talk a little bit more about the interns that we have in the center in a moment. But the interns work with those student orgs to provide them support with programming, getting things going, if there's something that they want to accomplish. Um, so they kind of become a connection between the intercultural center and the student orgs. 
Um, and then we also um, just in general, make sure that the, the IC collectives feel supported. Oftentimes um, these organizations will meet in our building or they'll meet somewhere close by. We, can, we do anything that is needed. Um, so in, in, in that sense, we provide that sense institutional home. We also do a lot of work with heritage moms. Um, the Black Cultural Center really specializes in like a, a year long kind of celebration of the Black experience and does a lot of great work during Black um, History Month. But we do um, Native American History Month. We do um, Asian APIA Her um, History Heritage Month and we do um, Latinx Heritage Month. We also do some work around Women's Heritage Month. And so what we do is we form student committees and then we have um, funding for them to really do whatever they like to do around that. Our goal for the Heritage Months is to really just um, educate the community and to um, provide um, celebratory opportunities for the entire community. Um, we also have cultural competency workshops, which is something that our staff has started doing this year. And that's just another chance for us to help the community to better understand the ways that we can live together, grow together, become more aware of each other. And that workshop series really deals with identity. It deals with understanding others. It deals with um, a lot of sociological concepts. And they're just like these 45 minute workshops we offer for a semester and they're open to the community and our staff does them. So that's something else that we do. Um, then just like the, the Black Cultural Center, we do a lot of work with um, professors. We do a lot of work with other offices. We're like community partners. We become like a cultural hub space, the identity centers. And so we're really available to work with whoever would like to work with us. We're working with admissions this evening. And so, you know, to make sure that um, we, we are just here for everyone. Um, so we do have a really large group of interns. We usually have 20 interns that work at the center and there are a range of responsibilities that come with being the intern. So I've already mentioned supporting our student organizations. Our, our interns work in our building and um, between the three centers, the interns kind of make sure that the building has someone to greet um, at the front desk or, um, you know, we just help keep, keep our space comfy, homey, one year, the intern suggested that we needed more pillows. So like little stuff like that, we make sure we get done. Um, we had snacks in the building now because of the interns and a coffee bar because of the interns. Um, the interns also can do passion projects. So the Intercultural Center has funding and then we can work with the interns to do that. The interns create a newsletter and do a lot of our community outreach. Um, they do help with the Heritage Month stuff when they want to. And um, also our interns this year are doing some archiving um, with in terms of like our, uh, in terms of understanding the institutional role that we, or the institutional history of the center. I forgot to mention that we also do um, the celebrations and education around Pride Month. Um, so I should mention that too. That's another heritage month that we cover. Um, so I'm just trying to think of if there's anything else I missed. So we just, we have a lot that we really accomplish in the center. I can say that we're really embracing the fall. Um, with the return of the fall, we're going to get back to like the fast paced environment that we're in, we, we hope. And we've also become really creative around our programming. And um, we intend to incorporate some of the practices that we've developed as a result of the pandemic, um, like being virtual as well as in person so that more people can join us. So there's a lot that we've learned from it. We also have an annual, um, I know Dion mentioned some of the events that the BCC does, we do an annual award ceremony. So we're also preparing for that end of year um, award ceremony. So I think that I've covered pretty much everything. The final thing that I, the, that I do wanna mention is that we're a staff of four. Um, so it would be myself as the director. And then we also have our program manager and we have an assistant director um, for gender, gender and sexuality initiatives. And then we also have our administrative assistant. The cool thing about um, the administrative assistant role is that she functions as the administrative assistant to us in the BCC. So she's kind of like an in-between person and keeps us connected in that way. Um, and then we also have our director, our assistant director for gender and sexuality initiatives. She is the manager of the Women's Resource Center. So that's another kind of connection that we have there. Um, our program manager is an alum and she works with all things connected to um, to like making sure that the student orgs and the interns have what they need. Um, I think that's it. We do a lot of grass work, grassroots work and, and that type of thing. So I'll stop there um, and I'll pass it on to Ram Hernandez, which is one of our interns who agreed to join us. And I'm, I'm, I'm really feeling 
happy that that he's here. So I'll pass it on to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Dina Mani. Um, so uh, it's a little dark. I'm in one of the um, one of the science buildings right now and the lights are motion sensors. So that's also why I'm wearing a mask. Um, so hi, everyone. My name is Ram Hernandez. I'm a sophomore at Swarthmore. Um, I use he him pronouns. I'm a double honors major in peace and conflict studies, education, and medical anthropology. Um, currently living on campus. And I actually live in Wharton. So if you see this picture background, um, this is where I'm living. It's really pretty right now during this time. Um, so I currently work as one of the IC liaisons at the Intercultural Center. Um, and I've, I'm pretty involved in a lot of the groups within the IC. So um, Dina Mani mentioned Latinx Heritage Month. I was one of the co-chairs of the um, committee last, last semester um, where we organized like a Loteria night, kind of virtual thing for students to be able to join us. Um, we also had like virtual cooking workshops with a local restaurant that was really fun. Um, I also serve as one of the co-presidents for Enlace, which is our Latinx um, student affinity group. And, you know, like during a normal year, we have catered dinners for some of our students from restaurants. Um, and we try to like get different types of food um, here locally. And then this semester, because this year really, um, with everything virtual, we're sort of trying to um, create more virtual programming. So we have a workshop with a poet coming up on next week, I think, um, like a creative writing workshop for our students. So that's going to be fun. Um, I also serve as a vice president for the queer union. <laughs> so we have a pretty vibrant queer community at Swarthmore. Um, I think a few weeks ago, we had a chalking event where um, our students came to uh, in front of Parish McGill Walk and they were just like chalked rainbows all over the place. Um, and we took pictures and I'll drop um, in a bit the, our Instagram. So if y'all wanna follow us, I'll drop it in the chat. Um, I also serve on the first gen low income council um, where we, you know, we strive to like represent all of the needs and the voices of the fly students on campus to make sure that we're getting the resources that we need. And last spring, we actually were able to organize a, a spring break retreat for fly students where we went to the Poconos. So that was really fun. Um, yeah, that was really fun. Um, I'm also a Quest Bridge scholar for any Questies out there. Um, I serve as a uh, chair of community engagement for our, our chapter. And one of the things that the chapter here, one of the things that the chapter here at Swarthmore does, every year we have Quest giving. So the week before fall break, when everyone goes home for Thanksgiving, we kind of have like a little get together in the IC in one of the kitchens. Um, and it's really like just the time for us to get together and um, kind of build community. Um, I also serve as a Senator at large for the student government organization. So um, I strive to like make sure that our voices and the needs of all the different IC groups that I'm involved with are represented in the spaces where um, decisions are being made. And in terms of like the IC, um, we have a lot of other groups that I'm not necessarily involved with. Um, we have the South Asian Students Organization, DESHI. We have I-20, the International Students Organization. We have MSA, the Muslim Student Association. And so there's like just a lot of um, stuff. There's a lot of groups, a lot of support within the IC. And I think for me, um, I think definitely the IC has played a key role in my past years just being able to find my community, being able to meet other students with similar backgrounds and meet students that don't have similar backgrounds to me. Um, it really just helped me like center um, my identity and my, my own uh, sense of belonging at, at campus. Um, so yeah, uh, congratulations to you uh, class of 25. Looking forward to your questions. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is TJ Thomas. Uh, I'm a senior at the college. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. Uh, I use he, him pronouns. Uh, so my major, so I'm a special major uh, in global studies, the concentration in global political economy. Um, I'm an intern, oh, uh, and like a part of my, my special major, I've had to, as a language component involved with it as well. So I've studied Spanish, French, and Arabic at the college, and I'm a programming intern at the Black Cultural Center where I've been uh, since since, uh, since the beginning. So I guess a little bit of like the stuff that I've done at the college outside of my coursework and uh, at the BCC. Uh, I've been involved with volunteering in Chester through an uh, organization um, that, that sprung up out of uh, student uh, students wanting to like provide college access resources to the community after the, the closing of a college access center that the college used to have. So I was doing tutoring work uh, and doing a, a SAT prep with students in Chester. Um, my sophomore year, I served as uh, the class of 2021 senator 
in the student government. And then the ju my junior year, I ended up being uh, becoming uh, on the executive board as running uh, uh, student organizations. So I have very intimate with student organizations, getting uh, groups uh, funding, getting groups uh, chartered. Uh, chartering just so me, just means that they'll be able to get access from, from, from uh, the funding from the school. Um, and then um, something else is like, I've also been involved with some research with the professor at the, with the, with a professor at the college on the political science department. Uh, and, uh, uh, and yeah, so those are like, those are the main things I've been involved in, but like, I want to speak specifically about my experience at the house. Uh, the house has been the grounding point, uh, the grounding institution uh, for me at Swarthmore. Uh, I think back to my freshman year at the college, uh, I lived in Mary Lyons, uh, which was it's just a dorm that's like kind of far away, you know, like a pretty long walk to campus if the shuttle wasn't running. Uh, and so like sometimes, I don't know, Dean Lewis might catch me like sleeping on the couch or like uh, sleeping like on the, uh, uh, hanging out on the third floor, just pass out because it's a, uh, Kind of a long walk getting back, uh, getting back to Mary Lyons. You need a nap sometimes, and uh, also uh, at the BCC, this is where I met a lot of my upperclassmen friends when I was a freshman, uh, who uh, helped who helped really show me the ropes around Swarthmore in terms of uh, who are the professors like uh, I should like make sure I'm definitely engaged with. Uh, how do I go to office hours? Uh, how do I just like you know express my interest in my professors without fearing that like I'm gonna you know might might sound foolish? Uh, but it was like she's showing me what I needed to know to be to be more comfortable at the to be more comfortable at the college. Um, when I think about the BCC, uh, and I especially specifically thinking back to like my freshman and my sophomore years. Uh, I think about the upperclassmen who would show me uh, summer opportunities and uh, so our, like, our internship program. So I'm part of this program called Management Leadership for Tomorrow, which is like all about like helping Black, Latino, and Native students uh, getting uh, with, with, with the internship search or like na navigating that navigating that whole process to the point where like I was able to like secure I was a peer, secure a job before I even started my uh, senior year. Um, uh, when I think back to the BCC, I think about uh, SAS specifically. So SAS is the Swarthmore uh, African uh, um, African Student Society, African American Student Society, and uh, I think about the Big Sib Little Sib program that we uh, that we have each that we have each year, uh, where I got paired with the upperclassman who was like, "Oh, you're studying Spanish? Why not study more languages?" And so like I ended up doing that. Um, or um, who who would uh, show me uh, some cool trails in the in the crumb wood, crumb, crumb woods, or who convinced me to apply to be a black, uh, black cultural center intern? Uh, and thinking about my back to like, my experience as an intern at the black cultural center, I think about how that itself has helped me a lot of growing as a someone who can plan uh, planning events. So like uh, this upcoming weekend, this Saturday. Uh, we're doing a, a BCC sponsored hike followed by a movie uh, in the back in the backyard of the house where we'll be watching girls we'll be watching girls trip um, uh, watching girls trip uh, I also think about uh, just like what it, what is like the goal of our programming at the black, black cultural center uh, the goal of our programming is to uh, is, is to create a space for black students to feel at home to feel like they are to feel like they are centered to feel like um, uh, to, to know that they can find that they can find a community uh, when, whenever whenever they need it. So like one of my uh, one of the favorite things I love about the house is just being able to walk into the house or like like pre COVID times uh, and just like see just see people who are just, who just like who just talk to me. Like you you look like you're having you're you're down. Like uh, you, I would have people just like come up be like, hey, so TJ, what's uh, what, what's going on? Um, so just really uh, the community aspect of the Black Cultural Center, um, that's something I really love. And then just also like helping um, uh, student groups, uh, student groups start their projects. So I think about this one group uh, called Natural Knots, and their their whole thing is, you know, how do we take take care of our natural hair? How do we make sure the resource the resources are there um, at the col or at there at the college or at the bookstore, uh, so we can like spend our our college points to get uh, to get hair care products. Is my freshman year uh, or my sophomore year, uh, black hair care products were not at the were not available at the store. But you know, this organization came up, um, and they were able to advocate uh, and, and get that for us. Um, so I guess that's uh, all for me. Like, 
definitely I'm looking forward to your questions. Of course, like congratulations on being accepted to Swarthmore. Um, I hope that uh, I hope number of y'all join us in the fall or like not me join the rest of them. I'll be gone. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm so excited to have you all here. Um, congratulations again, wanted to echo that. Congratulations on getting to Swarthmore. Um, and I know that you have a lot to consider over these next few days before you make your final decisions. And so we're just here to tell you a bit more about choosing SWAT, possibly. So my name is Michaela Purnell. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm a member of the class of 2022. So I'm a junior. Um, I'm a double major in economics and black studies. So some of the things that I do on campus, oh wait, actually no, some of the things that I'm interested in, just like for first and foremost, that kind of like lead through all of my interests is like connecting to other people, like genuinely making true and deep, deep meaningful friendships, um, making art and making music, writing poet, like poetry, social justice, um, making sure that our communities get access to capital, secure the bag, absolutely. So I think that some of the things that I do on campus kind of like I try to reflect that and the things that I do and where I spend my time. So currently I'm an intern with the Black Cultural Center and um, TJ said some of the programming we've done there and we're doing there for throughout the semester. I'm an intern at the Women's Resource Center. So this past semester we've done some, pro some programming. I've spearheaded some workshops about reflecting and journaling and having time to decompress and it was censored about around musicians. So like we had one that was about Solange, like we listened to Solange's music and journaled to her. And another one was Jilly from Philly, Jill Scott. Um, I also am a social innovation lab associate with the Lang Center. So some of the stuff that I was doing there was we were each week we were um, having different workshops about um, what does reimagining a just economic future look like that everybody, all different communities have access, have true equal access and like to, to what they need and that everybody is really taken care of in our society. And I was a note taker for, for that. And so it was really interesting to hear, like it was, it was exclusively alum. So it was like interesting to see like, oh my gosh, I didn't know some people in such and such a generation were that radical about economics. You know, they have some socialists, um, but you know, it's a, it's a different, all kinds of different honest, uh, ideologies, honestly. Um, but really just to hear different age groups and connect with people who have gone through my institution and are at a different stage in their life. Just, um, just um, talking about what does an economically just future look like? So those are the, a few of the other things that I was involved in. And just wanted to say overall that Swarthmore has a lot of resources and I would really encourage you to take advantage however you can when you get here, just look around, survey, ask upperclassmen, ask career services, ask admin and take advantage of the resources that are here. Thank you. Thank you so much to our panelists. Um, and now it's time for you all to ask us questions. So you can, you can pop uh, into the Q and A space to ask your questions there. Um, I have a, question, a couple of questions I want to ask, obviously, of our panelists too. Um, uh, but we want to get make sure you get to your uh, questions uh, as well. Um, so please pop your questions in into the Q and A. Um, uh, and I guess uh, if you're not there, I'll, I'll, I'll start because I'm, I, you know, for me, I'm, I'm also a graduate of Swarthmore, uh, and for me, uh, the Black Cultural Center, the Intercultural Center, were all spaces where I found folks who who shared uh, shared my experience um, as a student. Um, so I'm really, uh, really uh, curious to hear from the students who are with us today. Um, uh, how did the Black Cultural Center, the Intercultural Center, uh, create that sense of belonging for you? Uh, was there an event you went to? Was there a conversation you had? Uh, what was that experience like uh, when you first kind of came, in, came into knowing about the centers and, and how did they enter your life uh, the first time around? And we'll, I can go around each of y'all uh, and uh, Michaela, if you want to start or uh, you can go to TJ and then Ram. Um, yeah, I definitely think the BCC for me, that's like, that's one of the spaces that I think has been one of the course um, centers for me on campus throughout my time. Um, for me, I just think about all the fun memories we've had, just times in there, just goofing off, having fun, celebrating being Black, talking about really deep political conversations about being Black and what the solidarity look like, um, all these different things. Like, I remember having hide and go seek we were playing we're like all like 18 19 20 21 years old playing hide and seek in the bcc 
one of our first weeks of freshman year or just vibing out to good music like being put on to afro beats from diff or like soca from um from friends of different parts of the diaspora and like really having my ideas and notions of blackness explode and the diversity and beauty of it all so that's what i'll say um for uh, all i could say <laughs> Uh, so for for me, uh, it's very similar to uh, Michaela and then it was it's a place to uh, find friends to feel comfortable uh, like not to say I'm not comfortable at other places on campus, but there's just something about the Black Cultural Center when I just like when I go in there, it's like it's like it's family. Um, and um, one of my uh, experience that I think about is like African Kitchen, which is an event that's put on by SASA uh, every year where I'm like, this is like my first introduction to food from 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 food from the diaspora that's not like that's not African American, and so I learned so like that's now like jollof rice is definitely something that's like on my menu of things uh of things to cook and that's to cook, um, just because of that experience there. Uh, thing about the the BCC uh specifically uh I think about just the conversations that ha that happen just in random places in the classroom, just like people sharing uh. Sharing their sharing experiences, sharing advice. So, like I mentioned, the pro uh, the program I'm in that I learned about through the BCC. Uh, I think about um, my study abroad program. I ended up going to France. Uh, I've learned about that program uh, through a through someone at the BCC as well. Um, just uh, or thinking about uh, gra graduate school as well, because like you know, ton, uh, tons of tons of upperclassmen have gone through that graduate school application process before you. Who can just um, just have information? You just have information to share to make your process smoother than theirs. Yeah, um, I think for me the, the the first thing that comes to mind is um, one of my first days on campus. I was in Parish, and I heard um, Bad Bunny blasting through like some of the speakers in Parish, and I was like so taken back because I so I'm from South Texas. I'm live like five minutes away from the border. I'm Mexican and Mexican. And coming here, like, I was like, oh, my gosh, like, no one's going to speak Spanish. No one's going to, like, be listening to, like, Bad Bunny or anything like that. And so for me, like, hearing that, I was like, oh, okay, like, um, there's Latinos here, right? <laughs> um, and then, like, shortly after that, I started, um, I met, like, uh, some of the people from Enlace. Um, and I became friends with them. And I started finding community. And then I started interning with the board. Um, and then eventually I started meeting all of these other um, groups of people, other first-gen students um, that come from a background similar to mine. Um, and I think like in that sense, um, yeah, like I think it de it's definitely been very affirming, like realizing that like, you know, sometimes I feel so out of place here, but there's other students um, from background similar to mine that are here and that um, have really made the space their own. So I find that pretty affirming, yeah. Thanks, John. While our guests are, are thinking about questions and another question maybe for Amani and Dion, um, uh, you know, uh, really curious kind of what role does a Black Cultural Center, the Intercultural Center play in larger con conversations around race or gender or class uh, for the entire campus? How, is, how do these spaces become a hub for those conversations uh, uh, throughout the entire campus? India, you want to start and I'll go to Mani next. Start. I'll start. I mean, I think, you know, one of the, one of the ways of answering is that is that um, there's, let's say where, I mean, when there are issues um, that involve um, societal or, or local uh, ideas, ideals, incidences of blackness, of course, the BCC is called into the conversation. Um, you can imagine um, the, there were lots of conversations or expectations of commentary from me as a director um, during last summer's um, racial uprisings um, due to the murder of, of George Floyd. So there is a, you know, there is a level of expectation that me as a black man should have some, some comments on that, but a level of expectation that me as a director of the Black Cultural Center should have something about that. Um, Amani and I are part of a team. Um, it's the Inclusive Excellence team, and that includes obviously the Black Cultural Center, the Intercultural Center, um, the Interfaith <coughs> Center, excuse me, um, International Student Center, Women's Resource Center, and our first-gen low-income um, students. And so 
with that, you know, we are constantly talking about the things that um, help to promote and up, uplift students who have those identities, but also um, helping to, in many ways, educate and inform our colleagues on, um, you know, specifics around um, those identities. So that would be my response. Um, so yeah, so Dion in many ways said exactly what I was gonna say. We're, we're part of a larger team. And so um, as part of the inclusive excellence team, we kind of become a space where these, these conversations can begin. There's also um, the kind of, I guess you could say leader of our team is, um, it's, I forget Shay's complete title, but she does really our DEI work. She would be considered our chief diversity officer in many ways. So, so um, we have someone who is really charged with understanding that um, in addition to the work that, that we do around understanding it. So um, I'll only add to what Dion said to say that not only do we become a place where people kind of are expecting us to be involved and have some input, but we try to do a lot of work around um, I guess the word would say preemptively addressing that stuff. So we work to kind of keep the community engaged and informed even before something happens that really requires us to be involved. Um, so um, the events that we do, the speakers that are brought to campus, the um, workshops that we do all contribute to that process. Thank you so much, Amani and Dion. Um, and while I guess we're still thinking of questions, uh, another one, one of my own. Um, so for the for my students, uh, y'all mentioned some events uh, uh, that happened uh, during your, that you've gone to or helped organize. Um, I, I find when I was a student, walking from those events, parties, performances, speakers who brought to campus were a large part of how I engaged uh, on campus. Um, so if there's a if there's a favorite event do you want you want to share or a particular experience you want to share that kind of speaks to the role the BCC or the intercultural centers played in your time at Swarthmore or one of the student groups played in your time at Swarthmore, uh, I'd love for you to share that. Uh, and this time we'll, we'll start with Ram. If you don't mind, we'll go TJ and then Michaela. Yeah. So um, I think the main or the the biggest event that comes to mind for me was that retreat that I mentioned to the Poconos. Um, I had never I had never really traveled much before coming to Swarthmore, so that was the first time I had gone, um, and it was so much fun. Um, for starters, because it was like 30 or 40 of us and we stayed, like, we rented like this really big ass mansion kind of place. Um, and so it was really fun to just like, it was just students. It was just um, no, no adults, quote unquote. <laughs> um, but it was, it was pretty fun. And also like we went to this, um, like it was really cold, but there was like this water park that was kind of like indoors kind of like, and I had never seen something like that. Like I had never seen a water park that was like, like while you were walking around, it felt hot. Um, it didn't feel cold. Um, so I, yeah, I think that's, that's the main event that comes to mind for me. Uh, yeah, for me, I don't know if y'all recall when, uh, Black Panther got released. That was a big deal. We did a BCC trip where I got, um, got a bunch of tickets and we're like, okay, let's, let's drive all these students over to the movie theater, uh, and just watch. And so like, I just remember, um, like just like sharing that moment with uh, some of my best friends uh, to this day uh again like the, the drive back uh, to the college uh just like that the conversations wouldn't wouldn't end and so i'm just thinking like how out this thing kind of seemed like oh um like that, that's the type that's like one of the cool things we just like get swarf more to just like uh pay, pay for is be like hey let's just take all of these black students to go see this movie that is just uh like just like just came out that um big cultural event so i got uh, uh i think about that a lot from my freshman year i believe um i'd say for me like one thing i've always been someone who like i really enjoy guest lectures and guest speakers so for me i was just i remember how ama like amazing it was to me that i was able to like through the bcc hear Sabrina Fulton talk and the, who is the mother of um, Trayvon Martin and um, like just hear hearing her story and like hearing more about her mother or her experience as a mother as a black mother what it and specifically as the mother of Trayvon Martin like what that has mean and what she's carried like in this country I think that that was very um like a powerful moment that like 
stands out to me, mm -hmm. as well as being able to meet, um, meet, uh, what's her, I'm so sorry, what is her name? Nikki Giovanni, uh, that's really, had a brain fart there. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember just, cause I'm really into poetry and, and art. And so like, that really meant a lot to me to be able to meet her. And I remember at the end of the night and everything, like I, I, I remember she was trying to go back to her hotel room. I was like, hey, can I just ask you this piece of advice? Like I was like really trying to squeeze every bit of advice, every single second I could get out of talking to her. And just like, I'm just really grateful that the BCC like had the resources and was able to have her, like I met the Nikki Giovanni that just, sometimes I just think about that and I'm like, wow, so. Thanks so much. I do remember the Nikki Giovanni event as well. I was traveling in Los Angeles visiting wonderful high school students. So I think I missed the event, um, but I saw the pictures afterwards. It looked absolutely wonderful. Um, I think that's one of the really, really great things about being uh, on a small campus like Swarthmore. Uh, you can both work with folks like Imani and beyond, organize really great events, bring speakers to campus, um, and, be, and be involved in shaping the conversations that's, that's, that, that your campus is having. Uh, and that's possible, those connections are possible because we're small, uh, because we're small and are able to do that. Um, so I'm also re really curious um, for uh, Imani uh, and Dion, um, if we can hear more, you talk a little about kind of your, your role as assistants, uh, assistant deans, um, if we can hear a little bit more about how that support works on campus uh, and, and how that connects with what you do uh, in, in the IC or the BCC uh, as well, that'd be wonderful. Marty, would you like to start or you can start? Okay, I'll start. Well, Dion's an associate dean, so let's start there. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't mean to, I didn't mean to mistitle you, Dion. I didn't mean to so, <laughs> my fault, my fault. <laughs> so, so, um, um, so, Wendy, you're saying like talk a little bit more about how we work as assistant, as I work as an assistant, he works as associate dean, and how it connects to what we do at the center. Mm -hmm, correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, kind of as I mentioned earlier, like the the deaning component is really, um, really speaks to the heart of how Swarthmore is like this small institution, right? So you get the type of care, like when I talk to people who are my colleagues and I explain to them who we are as deans to the students, they are shocked by the level of care and consideration and um, just the, the really one-on-one -on -one attention that we give. We're really like a lifeline to students and they don't need to come to us just because they are having a challenge in some area. They can just talk with us and be, you know, and it's just somebody who, who is like a friend, like a professional friend in a sense, right? A professional who's there to be your friend. Um, so um, in terms of how it connects to the center, we tend to see the students that um, we dean a lot of times walk through the doors of the center. And if they are in the center often, it makes sense that we be their dean. It also makes a lot of sense that we as, as um, people of color are able to be in this position because you know, in the identity center as a person of color, um, as someone who is there as a dean, we're able to really um, understand and support the students in a way that, that really makes it easier, we hope, to be successful at the college. So that's all I'll say. Yeah. Um, thank you. I, spot on, um, sister, spot on. I think, you know, one of the other things is, I'm going to elaborate on something you said is that admit, we end up deeming many of the students who walk through our doors. Some of that is because those students can actually request us. Students, you automatically get randomly assigned a dean, um, but there are students who say, hey, I'm at the center, you know, three or four times a week. I'm already having these conversations around my academics or my social life or my health. Um, I like to switch my dean. It's just an alter, It's just a request to the dean of students who ultimately grants it. Um, I think the other part of it is is that um, doing. Uh, we have obviously weekly dean meetings, and there are some parts. You know, talking about directly how they attest to our centers, where um, things get lost in translation around identity, and Amani and I have to serve as the translators because they're they're standard. <laughs> There's standard text on what it means to, um, to dean and to advise and to things in nature. But some of that doesn't apply to, per, some of that needs to be adjusted if the student is a, a, a black female first gen, you know, student from a certain part of the country. And you have to add these nuances into the conversation so they can understand why this 
um, student might perform in this way academic, why this student has this social um, incident going on, why this student might be reluctant to access this service or resource. And you have to tell them, uh, or we have to often inform or remind our, our colleagues about this, that there is a cultural component um, to the exist or an identity to, to the, how we work with these students. And let's not forget that. Thank you, Dion and Amani. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's a really important point. Again, this goes, I think, back to um, uh, Swarthmore's uh, size, but also the care that we bring to the work that we do. Uh, hopefully both on the admission side, we all get a sense of that throughout your application process, we hope, um, but also that, that, that what we try to do in the admissions office and how we can be communicating with you all uh, mirrors the type of communication and the type of connection we hope that you'll, you'll uh, hear on, see on campus as well. So that's done very intentionally. Um, uh, and so I hope you're getting a sense of that uh, from, um, uh, from our folks. Um, uh, so, so we have admitted students, obviously, and admitted family members watching us tonight. Um, so I want to ask my students, um, you know, uh, what are some of the things that or advice you might have uh, for uh, our, our admitted students uh, who are watching or still trying to make their choice? Um, what advice do you have um, uh, for these students about finding their belonging um, uh, on a college campus? Uh, what steps they may take to find folks who share their experience? Um, to feel connection to their college community. Um, we hope it's sophomore, obviously, um, but, but what are some advice that you all have uh, for these admitted students about how they might find belonging and connection um, uh, on, on their campus? And by starting with Michaela and Ram, maybe, maybe you wanna go first, TJ, what do you think? I like going second. <laughs> Michaela Ram, then you want to start us off? I I can start. Um, I'm gonna say something a little bit slightly off tangent. Um, that I wish I would have known when I was um thinking about it's worth more in other institutions. One thing that I'm gonna say about SWAT, the amount of resources that this school has is crazy. So I would wasn't even like in this mind space to think about that when I was thinking about um like uh accepting my offer or whatnot, but like as a first year student who like doesn't have that many resources, I get summer funding every single summer, like 4,800 bucks to do whatever I want in terms of internships and whatnot. Um, so I really think like that's one thing that I would say, make sure you think about or look for the resources that they offer. Um, and especially if you're a student from like a first year low income background, um, really wanted to put that out there. But in terms of like finding sense of belonging, I would say like really like, I think my first year I really branched out. Like I literally went to every meeting um, went to like everything that I could go to. And I think that's how I really started to meet people and started to like um, really find my community. So I think my main advice would be that um, to really like branch out, especially your first year to like not be afraid to go to meetings, um, meet new people, talk to people. Um, I think that would, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, I guess similar to Ram, uh, my first year, I joined everything that I could, um, became like, I'm, you end up realizing like towards the end of your sophomore year that uh, you can't do everything and that you really have to uh, drop things, drop some things. Uh, but that was just a great way to like really end up meeting a lot of people. And then I found that uh, um, I found that as, uh, as my time at sophomore progressed, like the large friend groups or just the lar large number of people that I just uh, met my freshman year, freshman year, like eventually started whittling down to like you know you got your your core folks but you're still like you know still being part of the community meeting people but you find that um i like uh you 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 end up finding that uh there's just a few people here who you'll just like you feel like really you feel really close to um and like i wouldn't have met them if i you know i hadn't decided to oh, so like for those who are going to take like math 15 like when they start which is Calc 1, there's like this little like a spec, like a additional component, half credit course you can do for it. I did that because like, oh, it's a great way to maybe meet meet someone. The person I met there on my first day is like, that's that's my sister now. Like we're, we'll be, we'll grow old together. Um, and in terms of like belonging as well, it's like the Black Cultural Center, again, like the number of times, like uh, it's, it's in new, I can't count the number of times I've just been like been in the center 
with her and like uh, my other, other really close friends until just like until until ungodly hours like 3 3 a.m or whatever and just um just really feeling a community you don't you don't want to leave because you just feel uh you end up feeling feeling so warm you, you just end up feeling at home and like that just happens by like by putting yourself out there by uh by joining clubs and understanding that there's a little swatty is like from my part really want to meet people um because like i mean after four years like the faces you you end up you end up knowing all of them so it's cool when it's like this new face pops up and you're just like you're really like interested in just getting to know them and like, it's a genuine interest that sound um oh sorry no i was just clearing my throat go ahead oh let me clear my throat <laughs> um so i definitely would echo everything that tj and brom were saying um it's really, it's really about, yeah, like I said, or, well, like they said, going out, not being afraid to go to club meetings, not being afraid to go to things alone. Um, definitely there was times where like, if I had taken the mindset like, oh, I won't go because I don't have a buddy to go with me. Um, there, there's like a lot of people who I wouldn't have met. Um, try talking to like, just talk to different groups of people or if you want to sit back and observe folks first and see how they interact and then choose from there who you decide to go interact with but like really just be gentle with yourself take your time I think wherever you end up going freshman year can be a bit like be feeling like a fish out of water a bit socially because like it's a new environment but I definitely think if you if you try to take the mindset of like okay I'm here to meet new people branch out take a positive mindset and like I said don't be afraid to go to events alone I think that um you'll definitely find some some good folks out there wherever you in, where wherever you go Thank you so much. Um, we're pa just past our time, so we have to let our panelists go. Uh, but thank you all. Uh, thank you to our panelists for joining us this evening. I hope they gave you some great insights into Swarthmore, into the Intercultural Center, uh, into the Black Cultural Center. Uh, and again, congratulations to all uh, our, our attendees today. Um, uh, we know you're making, you have hard choices ahead of you to make. Um, we do hope we're at the, near the top uh, of the list. Of course, if you have more questions, you can always get in touch with uh, uh, me and I can pass you on to these folks to help you answer more questions about the Bicultural Center or the Intercultural Center. You can always uh, connect with the admissions office on your admitted students page, uh, as well as more questions pop up. Uh, thank you all for joining us uh, again this evening. We really appreciate your time. And if you have more questions, please be in touch and congratulations again. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you.